you are in Europe, you'll be very glad to hear that my next guest, a very special guest, they come all the way from America to be on this programme. I hope they won't regret it. Blackie Lawless and John Rod from Wasp. Yes, here they are. Welcome, guys. How you doing? Howdy. Hey, thanks Long for coming trip. in. Thanks. <laughs> Long trip, yes. For a short time on MTV. Now, you're here, of course, to celebrate the imminent release this Monday of the new album. The new Wasp album, The Crimson Idol, mm -hmm. as sort of the, the first rock opera of the 90s, is it? Safe to say. So why, why do you want to write a rock opera? Well, I want to, instead of that, I want to know why these little microphones <laughs> are here. These things are really starting to bother me, man, I'm telling you. You, you probably know, can't, you This probably reminds me of a bad that. experience I had in Taiwan mm. one time in Tell us airport. about that, Blackie. Yeah. No, well, they can't get it off TV, no. that's a big problem. <laughs> can't say later. <laughs> Those little microphones are just in case the other ones you've got attached to you break down and blow up. Sure they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we? Sorry about now, that. You've, you've I'm made humoring this, myself here. This album, if, if the guys and girls out there buy the new Wasp album, it's not the normal Wasp stuff, is it? It's the whole story from beginning mm. to end about this guy called Jonathan. Right. And you wrote it, mm. and it's not autobiographical, but there are not experiences. The, yeah. Well, there's a couple of things. I mean, first of all, one of the things I had to discover, that I, I'd never done anything like this before, so... <clears throat> One of the things I, I quickly found out was having an idea for a story and writing it are two completely different things. Yeah, I know about so, that. So, yeah. you know, oh, you've done it well, before. I've tried to do it. <laughs> well, you know, you sit, usually when you make a regular album, you have the luxury of recording the songs, and then you, after they're done, you create a running order for it. Well, you don't have that luxury when you do this, because when you write the story, the story then is in stone. So you're basically, you're scoring a film. So the whole thing I'm thinking in the meantime while we're doing this is like, remember the flow, remember the flow. Don't screw up whatever you do, because when you get to the end of this and you go to put it all together, if the flow ain't there, you got to tear it all down and start, or tear it down and start it all over again. And after two years of doing that, that was not a very attractive thought. <laughs> <coughs> why didn't you, said scoring a film, why didn't you go straight to some big film director and say, hey, I got this great idea for this. Because uh. I'm too damn greedy to give him the money. What do you think? <laughs> you know, I, well, originally like, it started out as being a film. Mm -hmm. Now that we're done with we've shot the whole story on film to this point of what we're going to use on the live show. And once we saw that, then, you know, the wheels started clicking again and we are pursuing film companies right now as we speak. Excellent. So it's all out on video as well then? The album is going to be a complete video? Eventually, I mean, because what we'll, we'll do later on in the year is we'll, we take the Crimson Idol out on tour, we'll do it in its entirety from beginning to end. Right. And the, the video for the Idol is like a small version mm. of what the live show is going to be because you're going to see this big gigantic mirror behind us because the mirror plays a very important part of the story. It's the boy's alter ego. So you will see his life story going on behind us. It's like you know, in the old days, when you had a silent film, you had an organ player playing up there. Well, <laughs> now you got a film with a metal band playing. Up there. <laughs> yeah. And you won't be playing an organ, probably, no. Um, no comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta keep it safe, I guess. Really, I keep looking it's, at this uh, thing. <laughs> I'd love to know your experience in Taiwan. New, no, new, no, new. No, no. uh, but the guy we've just seen there on, on MTV it just went out as you were talking. Mm. He's a great guy. He's Chainsaw yes. Charlie. Yes. I can't actually describe how you describe him on the album because it's not a family family words, are they, I guess? And you want to know about Taiwan? <laughs> <That> makes <laughs> Charlie look like a day at the beach. Tell us, this Chainsaw Charlie, he's, he's representing the great big moguls of the great big record company. Well, you know, he's like, he's part of the machine. I mean, we had had, I'll be frank with you, we had a very, very bad experience in Los Angeles with somebody out there at the label. And we begged and begged for three years to get off the label. And they would not let us go. And so we wrote this song, and they let us go. <laughs> <laughs> That's your revenge. You know, sure, you know. There's, well, yeah, you find that there are more than one way to skin a cat, you know. There's a part in this story where Charlie is talking to Jonathan and he explains to him what the chainsaw is and the morgue. He says the morgue is the place where all artists will eventually whore themselves to commercialism. It's the place where the music comes to die. Mm. So, you know, depending on how you're looking at it, you have to make a decision as to whether you want to actually be like that in your career. And I don't mean you per se, but I mean, God knows you wouldn't do that. But uh, uh, I don't like <coughs> out here doing a jig for everybody. <laughs> no, he, I think you'd do it. <laughs> do you, John? <laughs> I think you would, really. Well, I don't know. Right, then, okay then. Now, it's another personal experience. I know because I've, I've watched your electronic press kit, and I know that you've mm. said that you actually met someone uh, during your years. Uh, there was a fortune teller, mm -hmm. and in the in the album it comes across as the boy meets the gypsy. Right. Well, tell us about, gypsy about that. Meets the gypsy meets the boy. Right. Uh, dyslexia strikes again. <laughs> 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 no, I had uh, an experience when I left uh, the New York Dolls that uh, 
I went to this party and I met a, a girl there and she asked me if I wanted my fortune told and I really didn't believe in it. So mm. I says, yeah, all right, whatever, you know. And so she says, you've just come out of something that's relatively important, but there's going to be a great void in your life. You're going to go on to make whatever you've just come out of look like nothing. And I thought, well, yeah, that sounds great on paper, you know, yeah. but it's like, let's see it materialize. I'm 19 years old at the time. So, and a week later, I went to another party and another woman came in and read my fortune. I mean, he was two times in one week. I, I know this sounds bizarre, but it's true. Told me the exact same story, almost word for word. And it has come true exactly like they said it would. And I mean, I'm not like a believer in that stuff, but I mean, let, let's put it this way. At least it's got me wondering at this point, because I mean, two people telling you the same exact story, you know, it makes you start thinking maybe there is something to this stuff, you know. At least, in my mind, anyway, at least the jury's out on it. You know, I'm not saying, no, it doesn't exist. Cool. What about the, I mean, if it's a story, it's a story from beginning to, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. This guy goes through a massive transformation in his life, and at the end, something happens to him, which maybe I shouldn't talk mm. about now. But is there a moral to the story, then? There always are morals, Yeah, be careful there? what you wish for. It may come true. Mm. Excellent. Okay. Next time you see these guys, they'll be performing live. Maybe. <laughs> yes, you will. How much money? It's in the contract. Uh, really, how much, how much money, money you got? got? It's in the contract. We're hold your ass up now, boy. <laughs> <Cool. laughs> They'll be back performing live. Believe me, I have the power over these as a people, you know. Yeah. After some more music and some more well, words from our sponsors. And, of course, I'm going to get to know about the Taiwan experience now. So yeah. join me later with Wasp, <laughs> won't you? So about that Taiwan experience, mm. then. Yes, Most Wanted, live from London, and as promised, now in the studio, brought to you at no expense whatsoever, I'll probably have to buy them a drink later, this is the new album, The Crimson Idol, and how many other programmes will get you this close to the music? This is Blackie Lawless and John Rod from Wasp, performing live in the studio, one of the songs, Hold On To My Heart. There's a flame, flame in my heart, and there's no rain, can put it out, and there's a flame, it's burning. I'm a soul And I'm afraid So all alone Take away the pain It's burning in my soul Cause I'm afraid That I
And two words for the most wanted coming to an end this Friday evening. And congratulations to John Harris for winning the U2 competition. By the way, your name was put in the hat along with all the other winners today. And 20 million MTV people stood around while someone pulled it out. They don't trust me to do it, I think. And you'll be uh, watching the concert next Thursday evening, John, with your girlfriend Dawn. And Blackie Law is actually in the studio with me. Ask me if your girlfriend was screaming before you actually phoned us. But then he would, wouldn't he? That's the sort of thing Blackie would say, really. And probably the sort of thing I shouldn't say. Sorry, Blackie. Anyway, John, look forward to that next Thursday. I'll see you there. And by the way, we'll also be there at the gig in Stockholm on Thursday evening. Alan the Dictator will be along with an MTV team. So if you want to say hello to Most Wanted, take along those big banners and say, Hello, Most Wanted, and we'll put you on the programme the next week after that. And if you're wondering just who you are, the people who won the tickets for the U2 gig on the 13th of June in Kiel in Germany, we didn't have your surnames earlier on, but now we do. You're Anja Sarkovsky, watching in Hiesho in Germany, and Dagmar Hantigwitz, in Bremen, in Germany, and Ulrich Mayer. You're probably no clearer now, are you? Because I didn't pronounce them properly. But there you go. You'll know when you get two tickets in the post to go and see the gig in Kiel. Thanks for all your letters, and thanks for all your time this evening. I'll be back on Tuesday with special guest in the studio, Was Not Was. All that remains is for me to say good night, have a great weekend, thanks for your time, and I'll leave you with the good guys from Wasp. This is Blackie and John with another song from the new album. This is The Idol. Take care of yourself. See you soon. Stare in the mirror, could I see One fallen hero with a face like me And if I scream, could anybody hear me? Ooh, if I smash the silence, you'll see what fame has done to me Kiss away the pain and leave me lonely Away the pain.